Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer <clears throat> talking about metformin. This is the second in a series on metformin. Um, <clears throat> this one is about metformin and prevention of cardiovascular disease. Other topics covered will be metformin and prevention of cancer, uh, prevention of uh, type 3 diabetes or Alzheimer's disease, senile dementia, uh, even prevention of cancer. There's also going to be a video on the FDA's approval of metformin as a general anti-aging medication under a researcher named Barzilai up in um, <clears throat> Einstein Medical College in New York. So uh, what's the story about uh, metformin and prevention of cardiovascular disease? Well, just to do a reminder, remember there's a, there's a gene called the heart attack gene. There was a book written by a friend and mentor of mine, Bradley Bale, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. He and Amy are referring to the gene 9P21, the P21 gene on the 9 chromosome. Now, <clears throat> uh, earlier... That uh, same gene was known with cancer researchers, especially with melanoma cancer researchers, as a cancer gene. Then it was found to be a heart attack gene. And guess what? It was a, an issue of C causes both A and B. It, it turns out to be a diabetes gene. And diabetes increases your risk for certain cancers, such as me melanoma, due to the Warburg effect, and see other videos I've made on that, um, as well as heart attack and stroke. In fact, three quarters of my patients um, have heart attack and stroke risk due to 9P21. This is the 9 chromosome. This is P21 gene unwinding and creating, creating some problems which start with diabetes and lead to cancer and heart attack and stroke. This is the artery, artery wall. That's the muscle wall. That's the um, lining of the artery. And that is the waxy plaque that's laid down when people have a blood glucose level over a hundred. In fact, a normal blood glucose level is more like 80. Uh, I will typically see in my patients 150, 160, even 190. 200 is the um, is a standard definition for diabetes. And again, when you get this lo those large uh, averages of, of glucose in the blood, you also get what what we call inflammation. The immune system comes in and sends in white cells which like monocytes and neutrophils I'll talk about those again in just a minute which release um, enzymes which make this liquefy instead of waxy. This liquid then has that intima or endothelial layer that is the only thing between that and the actual blood. It's not this plaque that causes the heart attack. It's the hot or inflamed plaque touching the blood, causing a clot, and then the clot flows downstream. If it's a big enough clotting that goes to the heart, it's heart attack. Big enough clot and it goes to the brain, it's a stroke. And then there are other uh, concepts like death by a thousand cuts with microscopic clots, which we cover in other videos. But this video is metformin and uh, prevention in heart attack and stroke. So how does metformin do that? Well, <clears throat> remember, one of the major and most important mechanisms for metformin is decreasing the blood glucose level. And these high blood glucose levels, uh, over 140 on average, shows a lot of evidence to cause uh, retina disease, retinopathy, tendon disease. In other words, that glucose is starting to uh, 
uh, glycolate. In other words, the glucose molecule is binding to proteins in the body. It causes, as I mentioned, retinal disease, uh, tendon problems, uh, kidney disease, erectile dysfunction, all those things, even before you're diagnosed with diabetes. Metformin helps reduce those activities. It also does some other things metabolically. Before I get into those, though, I'll give you the overall uh, debate about metformin versus uh, other meds in this area for cardiovascular prevention. Metformin does not show significant evidence of decreasing cardiovascular inflammation. The, the impact that it has appears to be much earlier in the formation of plaque and um, risk uh, settings for cardiovascular disease. Pioglitazone, even though it has more serious side effects, does show a significant um, advantage in terms of decreasing uh, immediate cardiovascular prevention. So again, my mentor and uh, friend Brad Bale admit, uh, will state openly that he has insulin resistance. It's no big surprise, I do too. Most of us, once we get 60 years, years old, have it. Brad's open that he takes uh, pioglitazone for the reasons I just stated. It's better at inflammation. Um, I have started with uh, pioglitazone. I am switching to metformin, and I may switch back and forth a few times. I may actually do a combination. Those are available too, and I'll do a video on that a little bit later. But what are some of the other mechanisms that metformin has for decreasing cardiovascular events? Well, it mitigates LDL oxidation. You know, oxidized LDL is a major um, uh, negative impact on endothelial or intima function. It slows the development of atherosclerosis that way. It reduces the, the uh, conversion of the harm, uh, harmless immune cells, the monocytes, into the fat-laden macrophages. You know that part that is the starting process for inflammation. Uh, it offers uh, critical protection to the endothelial cells by improving the mitochondrial function, the AMPK, um, which we've mentioned in other uh, videos on metformin. It also it improves the AMPK in the muscle cells, the liver cells, but it also improves the AMPK in the uh, intima cells, the lining of the arteries, thereby um, decreasing those early stages of disease. So, again, as it, as it gets to in many things in life, and you, often in the end of my videos, uh, you pay your money, you take your licks, uh, you have options with you have options with metformin, and um, sometimes it's a tough choice. 